They will stare, so strut your stuff. They will judge, so show them what's up. They will assume, so tell them the truth. They will mock, so tell them to back off. They will look down on you, so keep your head held high. They will say you don't belong, so show them that they're wrong. They will try to put you behind a line, so step over it and show them that what they say are lies. They will try to tell you that you're not worth it, but always remember that you are perfect. So stand tall because you are strong and fierce. And never forget that God put you here with love in his heart that can never be torn apart. How to be both Puerto Rican and a woman. Ethnic studies is very welcoming. Humanizing. Authentic. Transformative. Engaging. Passionate and open. Illuminating. Ethnic studies is empowerment. Empowerment. I would say community. Community. Respect. Hope. Ethnic studies is love. 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 Beautiful. Ethnic studies is beautiful. Holyoke is such a special and important city um, for a whole variety of reasons, but in the contemporary moment, it's often mischaracterized as being a city in decline. It really gives into uh, this uh, stigma that we have in Holyoke that you have to get out of here. You know, this is not the place that, that you really uh, should want to be in. One of the things that's missed in these narratives around Holyoke as being a quote unquote city in decline is its rich and vibrant history. And so one of the reasons that ethnic studies is particularly important in this city is it helps us to kind of address some of these misrepresentations, erasures. When we look at it from a historical lens, schools have not been an inviting place that really embraces the lived experiences of marginalized communities. Historically, Schools have been a place where familial and cultural values and histories and practices um, that are outside of what would be considered the norm were chastised or often erased in the classroom. I think that one of the reasons that ethnic studies is so important in Holyoke, particularly for young people, is that it allows them to confront these often racist stereotypes and depictions of their families, of their communities that are really dominant in a way that they have a set of tools and vocabulary to better understand their own people in a way that not only challenges, but dismantles and deconstructs the dominant narratives. Generationally, part of what has been missing is students being able to identify or see themselves in, in what they're learning. When I go co-teach or be a teacher for the day in the next studies classes, what I love is sort of the give and take, the like students asking real critical questions or like saying, well, I lived in the flats and here's my experience, right? Or when I say a story, they're like, hey, I kind of have heard my mom say that before. You know, like all of a sudden their experience and their history matters. I think this is an important moment for thinking about Holyoke in the context of all the struggles that are happening nationally around who are we, who gets to belong, what stories do we get to tell. That kind of storytelling is codified in school, in curriculum. Right? We institutionalize the stories that we want to tell about a culture, um, which is how culture gets passed in the big picture. My name is Dana Altschuler, and um, I'm currently connected to Holyoke Ethnic Studies program in the capacity of a university partner as a PhD student over at uh, UMass's College of Education. Um, prior to that, I was an educator in Holyoke Public Schools for eight years. And so, like, I, at that time, I was also a student, you know, developing, like, my own understanding of what ethnic studies is alongside my students. We were figuring that out. By the end of their eighth grade year, they said, you know, it is our hope, it is our goal to have ethnic studies at our high school so that all students can take it by the time we graduate from high school. And so, myself and one of the teachers took it upon ourselves to say, all right, we're going we're gonna to create a unit. And so when the teachers came back to us and they were like, yo, this is dope, we, we liked it, we want more, Corinne and I then developed another unit. And then 
another unit and then another unit. And by the time the next school year came, we had an entire eighth grade introduction to ethnic studies course um, created. And towards the end of that school year, myself and Corinne Laguerre, uh, along with a, another former colleague um, named Jerrica Kofi, um, invited the new superintendent to a meeting to come learn about like what is happening in our eighth grade classes. So after the meeting with the superintendent and the principal from Holyoke High School, Within a matter of weeks, we got a call saying, come up to the high school next year. We want Corinne and Dana there. We're gonna create positions for you um, to develop ethnic studies curriculum. And so by the time we got to year 2019-20 school year, ethnic studies had become a fully fleshed out seventh through 12th grade vertically aligned curriculum where students could earn college credits in their junior and senior year through these dual enrollment partnerships. Hi, my name is Anthony Soto, and I am the superintendent of Holyoke Public Schools. So HPS district leaders uh, supported the development of the ethnic studies program, not just through a, a funding commitment, but uh, worked with, with uh, a group of people to ensure that, that the curriculum was, was culturally responsive and that the curriculum was aligned to standards because we, we do have a commitment at Holyoke Public Schools to equity. Ethnic studies is about knowledge production and who produces knowledge, who's um, capable of holding knowledge, and who has knowledge to share. And traditionally, some folks have not been seen as creators of knowledge when we know that that's not true. Ethnic studies is its own academic field of study, much like any other subject area that students learn about in schools. But what's unique about ethnic studies is that it's truly interdisciplinary. And what that means is ethnic studies draws on the many practices and traditions of both the humanities and social sciences. So that includes some of the traditional subject areas in schools like history and English language arts, but it also draws on academic disciplines like sociology, gender studies, cultural studies, political science, anthropology, and economics. And by drawing on all of these different academic traditions, ethnic studies is better able to help students understand issues of power, oppression, and resistance of the past, present, and future. Teachers work on the curriculum collaboratively and then as the years go by the curriculum gets better and better as we build and grow and our students inform our lessons and make them better. It feels like a very organic partnership and everybody serves a role, brings expertise. We of course as partners also learn so much. The relationship is really reciprocal. And so we bring some sort of expertise, but at the same time, we have much to learn from the director, from the teachers, the students themselves. What's happening in ethnic studies classrooms, uh, we can learn a lot from. The students are really engaged. They learn a lot about themselves. They learn a lot about their peers, and they have a strong connection and a, a relationship with their teacher. Um, the, the curriculum itself, is is intentional and culturally responsive it's things that they can relate to if you're doing this work well i think you have to respond to the students in front of you and what they need to know and the students will let you know if you are not serving them and you as an ethnic studies teacher have to be 
able to hear that and not take it as an insult, but that they actually care. They want to do work that's meaningful. Something that I've learned um, that will help me a lot in the future is not only the respect within this classroom, but the ability to speak your own mind. Students had a lot of agency over what they learned. Like students get to kind of control their environment and work with their teachers and with their peers. What do you want to talk about? What do you want to learn about? And giving students like a safe space for that. And I think that's what like those courses were to me. We really want to try to focus on active learning, right? We want students to be involved in the learning process. So if students are feeling particularly um, energized by a certain topic, what that means is figuring out a way to let them um, somehow lead some of those discussions, right? And, some, and lead some of that learning. There's no stopping them. <laughs> Whether people wanted to stop them from sharing that, they have the language, they have the confidence from uh, being able to kind of dig into those discussions. And two, because we don't want to stop them. Kind, fine, reminds me of a beach, rough, tough as the sea. We started as African to Indian and Spanish, and now finally to Puerto Rican. Most students here are descendants from Latin slash Hispanic culture. Being at school, everyday speaking English causes them to miss the chance to learn their own language. But if we offer these Spanish classes, they will have the opportunity to be bilingual. I know I come from the children of slaves and slave masters, from stolen gold, the Tainos of the Rio, Los Españoles, a Sancocho of history. My life experiences connect to the history of forced assimilation through my blood, which was inherited from my ancestors who were once forced to be slaves. Let there be no confusion, let there be no hesitation, pay attention, vivimos para siempre, Latinos hasta la muerte. Us Puerto Ricans still haven't given up. We pass down traditions from generation to generation, keeping our cultures alive. The question is, who lives, who dies, who will tell our story? That's right, no one tells my family's culture and story but me. You know, they get to a point in the ethnic studies programs where they get to start choosing the books that they want to read and picking the articles and doing like YPAR projects and that sort of thing um, and really sort of creating the sort of educational environment that they want. Because of ethnic studies, like we were so blessed to have these experiences where we got to like go to colleges and talk to college students. We went to community organizations and we like, you know, learned about what was going on there. We had these really fruitful conversations. Working with ethnic studies uh, faculty um, really instilled into me working for my community. I guess it's, it's, it's a spark. These were really active moments for them outside of the classroom that they were learning, right? So there's a piece again of ethnic studies that I appreciate about that reimagining where lessons are or reimagining where students learn. Like they're learning lessons outside in the community. Our department leads have have formed a curriculum, written a curriculum where, you know, Holyoke is a focus in, in, a, in the units we do, you know. So we talk about global issues, but we also talk about how that affects us here in our community. The teachers, we can't answer all the questions, right? We, we try, um, but having experts to come in who just are steeped in this, in this knowledge and wisdom and, uh, and then are able to identify with our students, like, it really it makes a big difference. In the spring of 2019, Mount Holyoke College students and Holyoke High School students worked together to plan a block party where over 300 people came to the cafeteria at Holyoke High School. Um, there was open mic, there was a DJ, students got to talk about all of the different things that they were learning in their ethnic studies classes. And part of what I think was so beautiful about that event as a university or college partner is that the idea came from the ethnic studies program. It wasn't something that we imposed. We were really centering the students' experiences and their ideas about what ethnic studies is. That's why building these community relationships, these partnerships within ethnic studies gives us power. It's not just content, it's not just curriculum, it's not just pedagogy, it is a movement and at the core of what ethnic studies calls us to do is to take what we're learning and to turn it into action, right? Praxis, reflection and action for social change. I think ethnic studies creates a space for like truth-telling um, that maybe many students haven't experienced 
ethnic studies also, I think, is a lot about learning to love yourself and your people. I, I feel like ethnic studies is like opening the computer for the first time. Like you, you're, you have this, all of this knowledge and, and power and information right in front of you with like, it's just like, just a book away or just a lesson away that you really, you sit in an ethnic studies class and you just l learn so much about yourself, about others, about the community you're in, how to navigate what it really means to be a human being in this world. One of the reasons that I love Holyoke so much and Holyoke Ethnic Studies so much is because here you're seen. In some spaces we ask students to sort of, you know, check their baggage at the door. Ethnic Studies is a place I think that said you could bring all of that in and we're going to like work with it. You know, like even if you think that you didn't do like a good enough job or you could have done better, everyone's encouraging you and saying that you did the best you could and that it is great. I just learned that from like my experiences as a student, but also my experiences as being in a teacher role. Just learning like how I can show up as somebody who's yes, going to be in that teacher role, but somebody who's also going to be like, okay, I'm here as a human. Ethnic studies is so important for students at a place like Holyoke High School or Holyoke Public Schools because it's not just about the academic learning, it's about the socio-emotional learning. You can't separate the two. It creates room for nourishment, so mental health nourishment, um, just community nourishment, your, family your, nourishment. your family nourishment, your overall being. Some people think because we take care of each other in ethnic studies that the work isn't rigorous and that we aren't mm. learning. Like some of the most thorough learning I have done is mm. been in ethnic studies classes. That idea of increased self-discovery for students then has translated to increased leadership among our student body. Once you're able to see the whole picture, you can see these like, like police brutality like as a toxic fruit that is poisoning your community and you can say we're going to take that fruit and we're going to get rid of that mm -hmm. and this is how we're going to do it and that's where things like we come together and we make yeah. action happen we see the tree and we're like you know how can we take all these apples away like how can we like take all this poison fruit and you know make it into this nourishing fruit and make it beautiful how can we make action steps to together to mm -hmm. fix those problems ethnic studies is a way to pull kids in who are not typically invested in education to hopefully grab their attention with something that's familiar to them and, you know, give them something to hold on to the, so that they could get through school and be more successful as adults. Um, I would say like around like the third, fourth, beginning of fifth grade, like I just didn't have that drive for school. Like I tried, but like it wasn't like, oh, I, like I want to be here, like I want to learn these things. It was more of like I'm just here to make my parents happy. And um, when I got introduced into ethnic studies and I started learning all these different perspectives and with what people go through, it like really like encouraged me to like want to be there in that space and try to figure out ways to help these people because like the things you learn in that class, it's so like disturbing but in a good way because it opens your eyes and ever since like that I kind of got you know I got really involved in a lot of things in school and I my grades were and still are amazing I get um, a lot of A's and B's and National <laughs> Honor Society oh yeah National Honor Society <laughs> big bucks <laughs> but yeah I don't know how I navigated the world before I was introduced to ethnic studies, but ethnic studies has been um, an exercise in creativity, an exercise in freedom dreaming, and permission to sort of uh, exercise those, those freedom dreaming muscles in my mind that I didn't even know existed. So one of the words that we learned in ethnic studies class is freedom dreaming. Freedom dreaming is this, this way of thinking that no matter where, what situation we are in, we are able to dream a better future. It's like this idea of a rose pushing through concrete because we have that power, if we all come together, we can be able to fight for what we dream for. It doesn't do much if we just show them how things are broken and not a pathway to rebuilding or to recreating or to fixing or repairing, uh, not just their school, but the world around them. This is the long term for Holyoke, right? Um, and it may be a long term challenge, 
but I think that that's something that hopefully whatever leaders come into the district and people around the community see this as about supporting youth. We have to envision a country, you know, in decades from now and they're all right here around us running around our knees and waist little children, right? And so how is school going to be a, a space to move us all forward? Last thing is where you go, if you could describe ethnic studies in one word. Oh, yeah. When I look at ethnic studies, the images that come to my mind is, is just all the people, the village that is committed to this work. Students, educators, partners, it's all of that, it's all the people, it's all the people. And I can not think about ethnic studies without all those dimensions. So it's hard for me to, to just reduce all of that in one word. Um, so that, that is my answer, is no one word. <laughs>